Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher, and today we're going to take a look at the tangle Zulu. Zulu uh, was created by CZT Judy Fogues, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, it is a really, really neat tangle. Uh, one of those in my book, uh, the um, it looks more complicated than it really is type of tangle. And so it's fantastic. So this is a grid pattern and I've already uh, got my tile here ready with, I'm just going to do a four square um, because it's, it's essentially rinse and repeat after that. Um, this is consists, this tangle consists of curved lines and straight lines. And that's it. The trick is, um, is staying focused and doing them in the right places. But you know what? If you don't, oh well, keep going with whatever you do because, you know, it, it, it'll just be a tangulation then. Um, that's what we'll call it. All right, so I'm going to start here in, uh, yeah, this square right here. And I am going to, I, I'm going to start oddly on this uh, right corner and I'm going to make a curved line. I'm aiming for the center of the bottom of this of this box. So just thinking one box at a time. And I missed it, but oh well. <laughs> I did the same thing earlier. <laughs> but that's all right. Okay. And I am moving my tile so that way it's e it's easier and I get a nice consistent curve. I, I might you know here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start at the bottom here. We're, let's try that. And a curve line. Oh up to the top. Hey that works out just fine. If we can't laugh at ourselves, right? Okay, so you have the top. So whatever space you're filling with this, one row are, and it's essentially like a curvy V. So you have them going this direction, and then your next row, they're going to go the opposite direction. So I'm just going to flip my tile. Now the opposite direction is a little bit easier, although I'm going to, I am going to start at that, at my uh, center or my little bit off center point. And draw my curved line and you know and do whatever works for you um, I like to share different ideas because we are all different and what might works for me might not work for you and and and, and that's why I, I'll, I'll uh, give you several ideas um, so that way one might resonate and then you know and I have to apologize for those that are left-handed I don't you know I don't know um, so <laughs> But I'm thinking still, you know, you can go either top to bottom or, you know, it, 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 I'm, I'm hoping and let me know, you know, if you are, if you're left-handed, if even just saying, you know, oh, going from top to bottom, making sure your hand is, has, is in a comfortable position. So that way you can like make your curves. Um, if you let me know if, if that kind of stuff helps, um, because, because I, you know, I, I have nothing to, to frame that on. I don't, um, and that would that would help me. That would help me help more. Um, all right. So once you have this done, then we are going to aura. Now I'm going to. Um, so we're going to aura the V's, and I'm going to go. You know, just going a certain like down. And sometimes you know, like sometimes I'm turning the tile, and then sometimes you kind of get to a point where you don't really have to. That is one of those again up to you type of things. Now I am going to correct as I'm as I'm I'm going to talk as I'm doing these auras, um, in my the step outs that are in the description box. I filled in. I might I'm going to put these up there for now, and then when I have time to uh, to update it, then I may just do that um, because in the step out uh, on the step where we're auraing this. I colored it in, I think, because I couldn't tell if Judy had that colored in or not, because it was just kind of small. Um, so I'm telling you, <laughs> and actually maybe I'll, maybe I'll, well, I don't know if I can write a note on there or not. Um, feel free to do aura all the way like this. So until you can't aura anymore, and then it's up to you. If you want to fill that in, then feel free to. If you don't want to fill it in, that's okay too. And then, you know, to what degree do you want to fill in? That's also up to you. So I kind of like the idea of doing the auras first, and then, you know, you can make, make the decision because maybe something went awry and you're like, well, uh, if I color in so far, then we'll be good. 
because that is, you know, um, my kind of course correction. Well, I'm going to say number. It's it's my it's kind of the first go to, uh, but a lot of times I will wait to decide if I need to have a course correction until say after the shading is done. But because there's no such thing as a mistake in Zentangle, that's why we have course corrections. All right. So I'm just going to leave it like that. See, like even like here. So like this one a little bit weird. So what I would do, and I probably will, is um, is I will color in to this part, and then I can straighten that out, and nobody's the wiser. But we'll do that last, because I want to get through these steps with you. All right, next. So those are all of our curved lines. Then we're going to work into here. And essentially, um, as we were auraing, and, and forgive me for if you are new to Zentangle and you don't know what an aura is, but you're probably uh, got the, got the idea from watching. It's, it's basically like outlining. And then also, um, you know, you can have interesting variations from just the, the distance between your auras as well. All right. So the next step is we're going to essentially aura we're going to, we'll take, we'll kind of do half at a time, still in this first box, but I'm going to essentially aura the, the outside line, except for that little bump there, <laughs> and, and then the bottom line, and I do want that to touch. Okay, and then that's, that's all we're doing here, is we are auraing basically that corner, like so. Then... We're going to aura the other half. Now this one, you know, it's, if you can, great to match up this. So using the Halibau technique, which is to draw behind, and that is, so like here, so right now it's easy because it, it's just really a thin line there. Oops. Well, maybe if I do it this way. Um... <laughs> Uh, so here where I have a little gap, I'm going to put my pen down on the other side of that gap. So that way it looks like I, this is one continuous line, but it's not. And I keep going too close over here, but that's because I'm focusing on this. All right. But yeah, so if you, if you just look, it's like, so, so I, I actually put my pen over, over it and then and move it sort of like in a straight line so that way I can that's like my way of lining it up now this one this side is a little bit bigger so it's okay I'm just going to continue the aura because I kind of want to have it filled in and then I can do a little like that and if this was even I would have it on both sides and then we're just going to continue that on in all four boxes. So the thing to be careful with here is, is also making sure that um, we're going the right direction. But if you think about your auraing the corners, you know, of the box itself, so looking at the box and we're auraing that corner. Now, well, let's see. I'm sorry. Flipping around to get the right angle for me. And then just remembering, you know, we're not drawing over this, what we've already done. And we're, so we're using that, using that Halibau technique like so. There we go. And, um, and then when we're doing the, the, the flip side, it's the same thing, you know, looking at just this corner. And almost the, the first one is is almost easier because I'm not trying to line anything up. I'm just trying to make sure that my my lines are straight and that they are evenly spaced. It's this one that um, this side that you, it's uh, because I'm worrying about that and then I I'm not don't have my paper necessarily this now this feel this side feels a little bit better for some reason, um, but I, I don't necessarily have it positioned like I would like I really like so all right last last box here now um, of course you can do variations so on um, the tangle patterns entry and I, I you know I think I'll put a link to that also in the description box so you have it um, it seemed, yeah, I think it was on there. 
there was an, um, and I don't know if it was, um, if it was Judy or if it was Linda Farmer who manages, who is, you know, the owner of that site and does such a fantastic job curating all of our tangles. Um, but they had one where instead of doing all of these, they, you know, she did like a couple. So like, like, it, uh, diagonal. I'm like, well, that's a neat idea. And it was in, you know, a, a larger space. And I'm like, well, that's how, how cool of an idea is that? And so I am going to, let's see, and how many in, um, so I am going to shade this in and let me move to, okay, we'll get the graphic one out because it's handy. And we'll straighten that line out. Now I'm just going to color the majority of it in with this. And then I'm going to touch up the sides. And then something too, um, unless you counted and you were real careful and, um, you know, where you have the same number of auras, you know, so you might or might not. I wasn't paying attention. I was just auraing to fill the space. But, and I forget how many I covered in there, but I have one, two, three, one, two, three. So from, you know, so, and like I said, sometimes they are different shapes. So let's see, is that it? Two, three, one, two, three. And then it's shaded in. So this is also a way if you want to, if you need to even things out. Um, so if, if say if, if one is um, like this, you know, these are, for, these are, these are closer together than these, but still, you know, I can, let's see, one, two, okay. I seem to have three and then I'm coloring in. Oh, one, two, three. <laughs> okay, but this, so I can still, I can kind of widen this a little bit. And then I can decide too, because it doesn't have to, they don't have to match in that way. I, I probably might rather have the, the size of this triangle match up. That's more important. Like I said, when you're filling in, that's when we can fix any, just about anything. All right, so I'm just smoothing that out there so it looks a little nicer. And that's basically it, except for shading. Now, for shading, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some graphite. I'm going on the outside of these curved lines that we have. With my woodless graphite pencil. You know, I have this, my little um, wax seal of my chop here to help me stay centered. <laughs> it's not working so well today. All right, next I need to get this sharpened a little bit. Okay. Now, as we were talking about coloring in, there's nothing, you can, if you want to, um, do some other things with coloring in, you certainly could, you, you know, could color in every other thing or, you know, it doesn't, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can de kind of decorate it as you, um, as it calls you to do. We should say that. I kind of like to keep the spirit of the tangle and, uh, you know, that's just me. But you certainly could have fun with uh, decorating. Now, all of a sudden, so <laughs> all of a sudden, the, these these corners are popping out in my eyes. There's a tangle called Mary Hill, and I think I do have a video on that one. And um, on Judy's uh, example that was on uh, Tangle Patterns, uh, and I'll show in a minute because I I I, I uh, replicated what she did. The these corners had that Mary Hill look where it just kind of um, I don't know they look a little bit three three D if I don't know if that's the right word. Um, just where all of a sudden it just starts popping a little bit different. Um, just really really odd. And all of a sudden I'm like this one this one is doing it. Hmm. So. With the shading, as you can see, look at how that adds depth. And it almost, you know, it, it brings these peaks up. And it's almost like now we have two dimensions 
and it's just a really, really neat way to shade that. And that is basically it. Let me share with you, uh, this was one I did earlier. Um, and this is what um, she had as a, like kind of a, a demo on, uh, on her site. And it's this, it's the same thing, except on the inside, instead of doing this pattern, we did, we, I added a grid and then, you know, continued the pattern, but just smaller. Um, so that's, so, it, you know, other fun options. So um, it is just one of those up to your creativity, but uh, even just as it is, and you can see how it looks neat when it's, um, you know, done on a smaller scale. So to fill in a section on a tangle, it's just absolutely fantastic. Besides being a tangle that you can then put the tangle in and have that be the entire, um, the entire piece that you might be doing. So with that, I hope that you enjoyed it. I know I certainly did. Um, it, it, like I said, it's just a really cool tangle. Um, and I was, I'm happy to share this with you. If you like the video, uh, feel free to give us a thumbs up in, uh, and also, um, like I said, if you have any comments, I do right now have the comments turned to to having to be, I forgot what they called it, approved or something, because I had some people that decided that they thought it would be fun to go on and, and put weird comments down. So I'm like, hmm, I don't want that. So, uh, so that's what I'm doing. But I am checking them regularly. Um, so if you have a question or anything else, feel free to leave it in the comments. And in the description box, again, are uh, step outs and... Um, other information about this tangle, as well as ways to connect uh, with me and uh, the my, my tangle addicts community that we that we have growing on Facebook, you know, in classes and all of that kind of stuff, um, it will be uh, in there and on my website. So, with that, I wish you very happy tangling. <music>